we all have heard about Charles Darwin's theory of evolution. Over millions and millions of years, human beings have developed from animals. But since, at least for a millennia, we do not see any further evolution happening. What's the matter? In the beginning, it was with a fast speed growing from amoeba and bacteria to fishes to frogs and all kind of animals and birds and finally human beings came. Since a long time, there seems to be no further evolution. Why? Nobody has ever raised this question, but it's, a, it's an important question. Nature has evolved us on the physical level. Our physical body has come to a climax. After that, nature has left us free to get evolved at subtle levels of mind, of art, of consciousness. And this is our freedom. If we wish to grow, we can grow in this dimension. If we do not do any effort, nothing will happen. So we are born almost like animals with little potential and it is our freedom if we can make the potential actualize or not. So the mental evolution, the emotional evolution and the spiritual evolution depends on us, on each individual. Previously, nothing was dependent on us. The physical body was growing and growing, getting better and better, more evolved, more complicated and finally nature has brought it, the human body. And with human body, we have got the potential, we have got the intelligence and we have got the freedom too. Animals and birds have no freedom. A dog is a dog. A horse is a horse. There is no good horse and there is no bad horse. We cannot blame the dog. The nature has produced the dog in such a way. There is no freedom. But for human being, we can say that this person is not really human. And for some other person we can say this is above humanity. Something divine has happened. Something godliness has descended upon him. Why there is so much difference between human beings? We don't see such differences in any species of birds or fishes or mosquitoes. They are all almost same. There is very minor difference, not much. They are not free. They are just following the laws of nature and there is no freedom. With intelligence, the freedom comes. Freedom and responsibility both come together. So it is our individual decision. That's why very few people grow in the field of emotion and spirituality. The mind is growing because we are forcing children to learn in the schools, in the colleges, in the universities. They are devoting almost 25 years of their precious life. At least the one third of the lifespan is devoted 
in learning to develop the mind. So of course we can calculate, we know the mathematics, we have so much information. The science is growing day by day. All that is happening because of the growth of the mind, intelligence. Nobody is bothering about the emotional quotient and the spiritual quotient. At the most, we are taking care of, care of IQ, intelligence quotient. And that is useful for the world. A learned man, an educated man can function in a way so he can earn money, he can do some service to the society and society wants only that. You can serve the society, you can serve the nation, you can serve the world and that's all. Nobody is bothered whether you are feeling peacefulness, whether you have a loving, compassionate heart, whether you feel connected with the whole existence or not. If you are worried, you are tense, you are depressed, you are frustrated, no one is concerned about it. So physical growth is done by the nature. The mental growth is being done by the society, particularly the education system. If you want to be a loving person, you have to take care of it. And most of the time, you have to just be a rebellious, you have to be against what the society has conditioned you for. The society and education system has conditioned us for hate, for jealousy, for possessiveness, for ambitions, for politics, all kind of cunningness, competition, comparison, to be the number one. And that means everybody else is our enemy. There are 50 students in a class, they say we are classmates, we are friends, but actually they are not friends because each one of them wants to be the number one in the class, number one in the school. This ambition gives us the feeling that everyone else is enemy. We have to compete with everyone and we have to win and make everyone else defeated. How can we be friendly? How can we be loving? And from the very beginning, our school system depends on this comparison and competition. The whole life we will continue the same story in different, different fields. I'm mentioning this particularly because if we want to grow in lovingness, in friendliness, in compassion, we have to understand our own conditioning is the barrier and we have to drop it knowingly. Only then we can be relaxed, aware and loving and further ahead we have to get a spiritual evolution. That means to grow more and more in consciousness. If we become super conscious, then the darkness from our subconscious will disappear. All these conditionings which I have mentioned, which create jealousy and hate, they are in our subconscious mind, in the dark part of the mind. Directly we cannot deal with them. But if we become super conscious, 
more alert, more aware in each of our action, all our day-to-day -day activities, if we do with more awareness, gradually we become full of light, the light of wisdom, the light of consciousness and gradually those conditionings, those unconscious habits, they start disappearing. So we cannot deal directly with the subconscious mind, the unconscious, the collective unconscious and the cosmic unconscious. It is beyond our reach. But we can definitely do something to become more conscious. We are already conscious, but we can be more and more conscious. And with that growth in consciousness, our spiritual quotient goes higher. And in the same proportion, love starts blossoming. Because our unconscious conditionings disappear. The darkness is no more there. We can feel light, we can feel connected with people around us, we can feel connected with the nature, we can feel connected with the whole cosmos. We can call it cosmic love. As we are right now, it is even difficult to love a person. I have heard about a mad king. He was a little crazy, but too much mathematical. He wanted to create a guest house in his palace. So any guest who comes, he will be invited to live in that house. So he wanted a perfect guest house. So he collected gathered all the so-called genius, talented people, the engineers of those days and told them to make an average figure. If the guests will come into my house, what should be the height of the door? It should be according to the average. So go to the whole kingdom, measure every person, their tallness, their width, thin or fat, make average of everything. And the guest house should be made in such a way so anybody who comes will enjoy the guest house. Everything will be of the proper size, perfect size. The king was a perfectionist. So the engineers and the mathematicians, they did a lot of work, it took a few months to get the average figure and according to that average figure, the house was made. The bed on which the guest will lie down was made for an average person. And the problem started after the guest house was built, whosoever came to the palace, never came out of the palace. People were surprised what happens to the guests. Whosoever goes in, just disappears forever. Gradually the news started spreading that the king is mad and he welcomes the guests and suppose he is taking him through the door and the guest is little taller then the average door, suppose he is two inches taller, then the king will ask, we have to cut down two inches from your body. And there will be many people with instruments and weapons. And they will make the person of the perfect size because the man is round. The door is perfect. It is made by the great intellectuals to the great engineers. This man is wrong, so either he has to be cut from the feet 
2 inches or 2 inches from the head. So he becomes a perfect guest. Of course, the guest will die. Sometimes the person could enter through the gate, but when lying down on the bed, again he was measured. If he is fat and he is not looking good on that bed, he is not proportionate, then he was incised from both sides. There was a lot of bleeding and he was finished. But he has to be of the perfect size. Sometimes the guest was little shorter than the bed. Then he was, he was pulled traction from both the ends. Most of the time he got multiple fractures and he died. We will be laughing about the mad king who wanted to make people fit to his ideology. And somehow this mad king is residing within each one of us. We have an idea. We have a frame. How a father should be, how a mother should be. The definition of a good husband, definition of a good wife, how the brother and sister should be, how the boss should be, how the subordinate should be, how should be the neighbor. We have a definition. And we are clinging to that definition. And of course, nobody fits in that definition. So how can we love? If we have this perfectionist idea in our mind, this bed and this door, then there is not a single person in this world out of 8 billion, there is not a single person who can be loved. Nobody fits in this criteria. What to talk about the others? We do not fit ourselves in our own criteria. And that's why there is no self-love, there is no self-respect. We condemn and criticize ourselves too. And if I cannot love myself, how can I love others? And this conditioning, these definitions, these criteria are very deeply rooted in the unconscious mind. We don't know when these ideas were put in the mind, probably in early childhood. And whenever we meet a person, we try to measure it, whether he or she is fitting in the frame or not. At the most, we can love some aspect of the person. And that aspect will be hardly 10 or 20% of the whole personality. What about the 80-90% of that person? We don't like. So there will be always a conflict. Love and hate together. We love partially. We don't love the complete person. And the same the other person is doing to you. He loves some part, not the whole person. And that's why love has become so difficult. So we have to understand these difficulties and the way is to move upward in our awareness, to reach to the superconscious and even above that is collective superconscious and even beyond that the ultimate cosmic superconsciousness. With that light the darkness of subconscious and unconscious disappears. Those conditionings, that perfection, 
ideology, those frames, those beds and doors, they disappear and then we start loving people as they are without any conditions. And this is the only way we can love. And then we start loving and respecting ourselves too. Whatever we are. No conditions. Love can be only unconditional. There is no other way to love. To be unconditional, we have to drop those unconscious conditionings. They are creating the hindrance. And the way is not psychoanalysis. Because the psychoanalyst goes deeper in the dark valley. That way is not going to work. Psychoanalysis has come in this world almost 125 years ago and they are not able to analyze completely a single person. In the East, they have tried something else. Not to go in the subconscious, but go above the conscious. Go beyond and beyond and beyond. So the spiritual growth results in emotional growth automatically. We don't have to deal directly with the love. We just become more meditative and love follows like a shadow. 